So now we have looked at display of two-dimensional data, three-dimensional data, and then we can also have dynamic data uh, that represent change over time. And to display those and visualize and analyze those, we can use animations. So when, can we use, when should we use animations? For example, if we are working with dynamic simulations, uh, simulations are, for example, used for prediction of ocean, surge, flooding, pollution, migration, urban growth. So outputs of simulation, dynamic simulations can be animated within GIS. Another big area of application are time series of data. For example, we can have measured temperature, precipitation, melting of ice cap, or uh, uh, urban growth from remote sensing data and those can be animated uh, again within GIS. And then there are some more unusual applications, for example, if you are trying to analyze certain method and how it changes uh, by changing the parameter, that may be that's another application and we will show some examples of that as well. Uh, one important thing to remember about animations is that it requires data that change continuously. For the outputs of dynamic simulations, that means that, that you need to create the frames from a relatively small step. For monitoring data, sometimes it is not possible to, to gather the data over time with sufficiently small step to capture the continuous change. So you may need to do interpolation over time to add frames. Now, what are the most common applications of animations? And I'm just, there are so many, I'm just mentioning two. One is weather maps. Everybody knows them. Everybody has seen them on TV or on internet. And there is plenty of them and they represent both data and models. And another uh, nice application, and you can, you can see, this is just one of the websites that has these animations. Then another one, another example is pollution at air, airnow.gov. Uh, there are some very nice air quality conditions maps animated that show how the air quality changes throughout the day. Uh, North Carolina has some quite interesting maps there. And uh, as I said, we can do the animations in 2D and 3D. And uh, in 3D, we have different types of animations. One of the most common and most popular ones is flyby, where we are using a single static surface and we are just flying, flying over it. It's extensively used, for example, by Google Earth, but there are many, almost every three-dimensional uh, visualization tool has flyby flyby tool where you just uh, work with mouse to fly over topography. It is uh, most useful when you have larger data sets and you want to explore it uh, with greater detail to get really close. Uh, then another type of animations is with dynamic surfaces where you have series of changing surfaces and the position viewing position is static. And another one would be, for example, cutting place, planes, where you are using the animation to slice through stacked surfaces. And again, the most important thing to remember is that you need to have small step between frames so that the change is continuous. And we will look at some examples of these animations uh, after I finish this, uh, this lecture. And then just a final word about the the newest, uh, newest popular way how to display GIS data and that's using WebGIS display. Uh, here is an example uh, of a map done from GPS visualizer uh, that represents the visitors who visited Jockey's Ridge during the summer of I think 2006 and uh, it has a small subset of these visitors and all that we had was zip codes. So just using the zip codes, we were able to map where all these visitors are coming from, uh, coming from. 
and and here it was very easy to do through through web gis you can do much more sophisticated uh, maps and visualization using for example google maps and google earth so what i would say that web gis is the most dynamic rapidly evolving component of geo uh, information technology and we are seeing uh, web gis going way beyond the uh, beyond just viewing the data displaying the data but more and more websites offer some tools for uh, for geospatial analysis so let's now look at some dynamic gis examples In this first example, you can see a simulation of filling of uh, water reservoir. And this was one of the first simulations that we have done uh, at US Army Construction Engineering Research Laboratory in 1991. So here is first a relatively simple example that shows use of animations to explain uh, functioning of a method and uh, how, how, for example, an interpolation surface changes when we change interpolation parameter. And we will be talking about splines and we will be working with this, uh, with this method. Here is another exa example of uh, method analysis where we are exploring how the parameter that controls the influence of topography on interpolated surface uh, impacts the results. Here is dynamic model just for plane observations. And this is uh, interpolated average monthly precipitation. And you can very nicely see the trends uh, as, a surf as a dynamic surface as, it, as the precipitation changes throughout the year. Here is an output from simulation, and this represent, represents water flow over complex terrain. Here is water flow accumulation in valleys, and you can also see how the crest rises and uh, moves throughout the landscape. And that at certain point, the crest reaches its maximum, where the maximum reaches the outlet, and then it doesn't change anymore. This is combination of water flow and slope map that represents sediment flow over complex terrain. And you can see that it's different from water, that it's really maximum somewhere in the middle slope where the slope is the, um, uh, the steepest and also that the sediment transport throughout the valleys is much bigger than on the hill slopes. And the sediment transport also decreases in those areas where we have the, uh, where we have concave um, topography. This is again output from a simulation that compa compares solar radiation during summer and winter solstice. This is summer, and you can see that the entire valley, entire area is uh, illuminated, and uh, you can also see that during the winter. Uh, there are parts of this landscape deep in the valley that never get direct solar radiation. So this is an important simulation, for example, for uh, plant growth, for agri agriculture, forestry, but also for placing um, solar, uh, solar panels. Here is again an example of analysis of method that shows how increasing the number of, uh, of samples reduces the error uh, in the um, uh, results of solution of continuity equation and how the, how the noise that is, uh, that is in, the, in the solution just decreases as you increase number of particles. And we will be talking about this method and, and explain uh, the example in a greater detail. And this is sediment flow, uh, sediment flow map, and uh, sediment flow map, and this is net erosion and deposition. Erosion is here, deposition is the blue. Here is another ins uh, illustration of the path sampling method, and uh, 
on the left are the particles that move throughout the landscapes and we use the density of these particles as a measure of water flow depth which is shown on the right. And you can see that this area has more uh, water, it's uh, more surface runoff and that's the area that is, uh, that is disturbed. Uh, here is a multi-scale version of the uh, same simulation where we have for certain area, we are let's say planning some developments so we need higher resolution results. So, so essentially when the uh, samples hit this high resolution area, they are split into a smaller, larger number of particles and the simulation continues at higher resolution. This is a cross, this is a moving cutting plane through the cross section. Uh, and you can see that you get the, uh, you keep the size of this cross section uh, uh, the same uh, by moving uh, the, the surface, uh, the multiple surfaces towards the viewer. Otherwise, because of the perspective, it would be getting smaller and smaller and harder to see. So this is just a three-dimensional uh, map showing three-dimensional soil properties. It is distribution of pH. This is another three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional representation of here now geological fe features. This is for example an ancient subsurface la uh, lava, lava flow that is currently covered. This is visualization of multi-attribute, multi-dimensional site data. We have already uh, talked about the examples where we can display the three-dimensional uh, where we can display point data as three-dimensional symbols. Here the symbol allows us to, to show the proportion of uh, clay, silt and sand within each sample. And here is the uh, animation that shows uh, three-dimensional distribution of uh, monthly nitrogen in Chesapeake Bay in one year cycle. So you can see that in the spring there is a uh, uh, inflow of nitrogen from the north and during the, uh, during the summer we have inflow of, uh, of salt water and reduction of nitrogen concert concentrations. And here is again essentially a four-dimensional model that shows evolution of chemical concentrations in groundwater based on 10 years of well sample data. So you can see that the, uh, that the plume has, uh, has evolved, it was very big, then it shrinked, and then somebody put some more, more pollutants there, so it increased a little bit again. And you need four-dimensional interpolation to, to create uh, models like this. And then finally, this is the ever popular fly, fly through. And this is actually through Fort Knox, a military installation along the river. So this is all about the animations and I hope that this was inspiring for you and that you will find an opportunity to do uh, uh, some animations as well for your project or sometimes in future.